Hola a todos, yo soy Nicolás. Yo soy Nina. Y este es Aurorita. Y este es eh, un video que, eh, en que entrevistaremos a Vera Gorbunova. Es una científica muy importante del área de rejuvenecimiento. Ella es profesora de biología y también codirectora del eh, Centro para Investigación del Envejecimiento de la Universidad de Rochester en Estados Unidos. Esta entrevista va a ser realizada en inglés eh, y seguramente habrá subtítulos en, en español para que eh, todos los hispanohablantes puedan entender. Eh, bueno, entonces eh, queremos saludar a la profesora Vera eh, y lo empezaremos en inglés. Uh, uh, hi Vera, how are you? Hello, very good, how are you? We are fine trying to make everything at the same time. Uh, Vera, uh, the naked bull rat lives a lot, like uh, until maybe 40 years. And um, it lives, uh, you know, in the earth. So it is protected from uh, predators. So my question is, do you think that, that this long time this species lives is is linked to to this fact i mean do you think that the lifespan of a species is something open to uh, the influence of natural selection mechanisms oh yes absolutely um in general when we see animals that live very long uh, lives i mean the species that live very long these would usually be found in various uh, places that are protected in, in some way. It could be very deep in the sea or underground uh, because this ecological niche allows them to live longer. They're not killed very frequently by predators. And this is why they evolve mechanisms to sustain themselves for that long. Because if you think about a mouse that lives somewhere in the open field and can easily be eaten, um, there is no benefit for the mouse to evolve long lifespan because it will never be able to realize it. Uh, but animals in these secure locations, uh, then they evolve uh, the mechanism uh, for, for long life. And the, this, of course, takes millions of years, so <laughs> we cannot... Uh, observe this process in real time, but we see the results of it. We already, uh, we saw your TED talk, for example, you, you talked that the naked mole rat doesn't uh, get cancer while most rodents uh, get cancer. And uh, it lives around 30 years in the lab. Uh, so my question is, what does it die from? Like, if it doesn't get cancer, if it doesn't get most uh, diseases of aging, why does it die at 30 years old? What, what kills it? Well, you know, actually the most recent update was that they, some more rats even live to 40 years. Um, and, you know, because they live so long, uh, the result is that they very rarely die <laughs> in captivity in the lab. So we don't really have enough data to to say you know there is a preferred cause of death of old animals uh, but young animals die frequent i mean not so frequently but the, at least we see them in our vivarium that they die occasionally because they fight uh, they have this um, very sophisticated uh, societal structure and they fight for dominance so that would occasionally result in death of younger animals. So it's not related to disease. It's just their, you know, their society. <laughs> uh, but in terms of disease, we really don't know because like we've been keeping these animals since 2009 and we only had maybe two animals die of old age. <laughs> Wow, so it's really a, a different kind of animal because <laughs> if you can't even tell exactly uh, what kind of old age problem uh, it dies from. Uh, another question is that there, there is some evidence that the naked mole rat doesn't show demographic aging. Uh, 
but there is a, a study uh, with you and other scientists that, that you guys published that uh, shows that the naked mole rat sh uh, shows epigenetic aging. So it does age, but it, it doesn't age demographically. Could, could you explain this a bit? Because it's a bit confusing. <laughs> Yeah, so demographically, that's exactly what we just discussed, that uh, we have, uh, for example, 100 naked mole rats, and we don't see that they die more frequently with age because they really, they live so long and they die very rarely, and we see more frequently young animals will die because they fight. Uh, so as a result, if you plot... Um, mortality versus time, there is no change because the, the mortality is not related to old age. Um, so that's why demographically you can say they are non-aging, but when we looked epigenetically, we saw that there are certain changes that happen to the epigenome, but, but these changes are not linked to increase mortality or they are not linked to increase disease. <laughs> so they kind of... Um, uncoupled these two processes of increased epigenetic age and increased uh, disease susceptibility. Um, yeah, we, we saw a very important paper. Uh, you published it uh, very recently uh, together with other uh, relevant scientists from the aging field uh, in which you uh, managed to um, implement a characteristic uh, uh, from the naked mole rat in uh, regular rats uh, or from another species. I, I, I mean regular from another species, the, the, the most common as, uh, lab species. So, um, uh, Professor, do you think is that instead of genetic modification, it would be possible in the future using an epigenetic modification in order to overexpress that gene? Yes, of course. We are looking for various ways how to change gene regulation because, yes, gene therapy is you know, relatively um, you know, involved approach and it may not be completely safe and there are various concerns associated with it, although you know, it becomes safer and safer and maybe something that people will be using more broadly in the future. Um, but epigenetically, you know, this is still a little bit <laughs> of, a, you know, sci you know, there is no established method of doing things epigenetically at the moment. People are trying to develop method to target epigenetic changes to particular places. We don't really have this technology, but maybe in the future we will. Uh, I think probably the most um, realistic way, or the most practical way, I would say, would be pharmacological way, because we can also increase, uh, achieve the same effect uh, using various small molecules of pharmacological Intervention. So that's what we are focusing on right now. Uh, but regarding the, the RNA vaccines that were recently um, developed for uh, COVID vaccines, uh, maybe this technology advanced at some point that would allow to use this RNA uh, technology to uh, activate a specific gene to overexpress this gene. Do you think it can be a, a collaboration with this that um, part of the of the scientific field to to unite you know your uh, research with the RNA vaccines? Do you think there is a, a possible way there? Yes, that, that, that may be possible. Uh, Maybe possible to express this gene using. Uh, modified RNAs, um, and uh, um, I would consider it more like gene therapy strategy, not ep not epigenetic. It's more, you know, you're kind of putting RNA in there. It's more genetic, uh, but yeah, I, I think it's possible, and that's something we were also considering. But um, you know, our first priority was to develop some small molecules that 
people can just take uh, eat orally and then it, it would increase hyaluronic acid in the body. Another question is that uh, you talk a lot about in the in the articles you publish about the hyaluronic acid, right? And uh, what's the difference between because some people use it in cosmetics, but this kind of hyaluronic acid, uh, as I uh, as I understand it, is a different uh, type that is a long chain uh, hyaluronic acid. Uh, do you know like? Uh, or could you explain what is the function of it in, in the body and, and how could it, uh, why does it protect the, the naked mole rat and other animals that overexpress it? Like, do, do you know uh, what is the mechanisms that it, it affects for, for it to, to increase the longevity or protect for the, from the diseases of aging? Uh, yes, so it chemically the formula is the same uh, but it's just the length of the chain that is longer in the naked morat uh, and um, hyaluronic acid forms a extracellular matrix uh, there are also proteins but it's all kind of all wrapped together proteins collagens and hyaluronic acid there uh, so it fills the spaces between cells and it's very important to maintain the structure of the tissue um, also, it interacts with cells because it, it goes around and interacts with receptors on cells. Uh, and the short versus long chain will give different signals to the cells. Um, what we observe in terms of benefits of long chain hyaluronic acid, uh, we find primarily that it's anti-inflammatory and it's uh, also slows down the cells, so it may slow down some of the processes, uh, which may be good for longevity. It, it it prevents metastasis. So for cancer cells, for example, when they metastasize, they break out of their matrix and they go and invade in other places. But hyaluronic long chain hyaluronic acid would kind of keep them like in a mesh, so they cannot come out easily. Uh, and another, probably one of the major effects that we observed in these mice that we made uh, was anti-inflammatory. So it uh, prevents inflammation and it gives immune cells also a signal to kind of calm down <laughs> and become less inflammatory. Uh, Vera, uh, you mentioned that uh, you have, have a priority to... Uh, make available uh, uh, pharmaceutical uh, ways to 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 uh, have these benefits, and not, for example, uh, um, uh, an epigenetic activation uh, mean. This experiment was made uh, using a genetically modified rat. So, uh, in order to use it in a human. Uh, how could you use a pharma product uh, if mm -hmm. the, the human being is not genetically modified? Yes, yes. So the idea is that um, in the in these mice, it was mice. So we took from naked morat and put the gene into mice. Uh, we expressed hyaluronic acid synthase genes. It makes hyaluronic acid, uh, but the level of hyaluronic acid in the tissue depends on how much it ma is made and how much is degraded. So we can slow down degradation as well, and that's where we can use small molecules uh, to inhibit those enzymes that to cut it down, and this way we can get more. <laughs> so so the, the, this is the approach we are using right now. Uh, in younger rats, uh, not from uh, naked mole rats, from the the uh, uh, other the another species. Uh, in younger specimen, uh, they express more this uh, this gene. Um, you know, there isn't really uh, a very big change during aging, but I think in like really towards the old age. In human, I don't actually know in, in rats whether we checked it, but in human, 
uh, we start to make less hyaluronic acid. And that's one of the reasons like old people, they will have kind of, you know, appearance where the skin doesn't look plump and smooth anymore because, well, there are many reasons. It's There is thinning of the skin and there is also less hyaluronic acid in the skin. So it's one of the processes, yes, that happen with age. Um, but in the naked mora, there is just so much more of it. Bueno, muchas gracias, doctora Vera Gorbunova, por esta entrevista. Gracias a nuestros, eh, digamos, televidentes, nuestra audiencia. Y eh, esperamos que esta entrevista haya ayudado a todos a saber un poco más sobre esta investigación tan importante. Bueno, gracias. Y pueden suscribirse a este canal, pueden poner un me gusta a este video, compartir con quien le puede interesar este tipo de asunto y bueno, entonces Nina, eh, hasta el próximo video. Sí, muchas gracias, chao chao All right. okay.